Hey, this is Ralph, and where we last left off was I just inserted a few images onto my web page. I'm going to go ahead and jazz these up a little bit by messing with the CSS. All three of my images are contained within figure tags, and um, those also have some fig captions, so I'm going to go ahead and format those a bit. A bit. Let's see, I'll go ahead and change the width to 250. By the way, when you just change the width of an image, it will change the height proportionally, and if you just change the height, it will change the width proportionally. So, go ahead and do that. And I'm going to say all of my figures are going to have a thin border with a little border radius and a little padding. So I'm just changing the characteristics of the figure tags, and the figure tags contain my images. So just do a few changes here at a time check them out and see how they go. And you can see that my figure tags are taking up the full width available to them. That is a behavior of a block element. So whenever you stick a border on something, you see it goes all the way across, or background color by the way, that's an obvious sign that it's a, it's a um, block element as opposed to an image. Check this out real quick. I did a, I pick solid red on the images. Notice how the border just hugs the image itself. That's an indication of an inline element. Okay, So I'll go ahead and change this to black. So I've got a black border on the images. And for these figures, I will go ahead and set the width to 260 pixels. And let's see, I'll do a little, oh, let's, one thing at a time. So let's, so you can see what this will look like. There we go, so my figures are smaller now. In fact, if they were a little bit bigger. There we go, a little bit wider, and if I want to center, now I can put text align center. Now I'm doing text align center for my figures. And this is, ultimately it will center my text, by the way, but it's actually going to center my image also. An inline image is treated just like text. So when I refresh this, you'll notice my image will get centered within that light bluish border. There we go, image is centered. And then I can also go ahead and let's back over to my editor. Fig caption. and refresh. There we go. So now we've got some information on here that makes it a little bit easier to look at. I'm going to do something I think will look a little bit better. I'm going to get rid of this padding. Don't like the look of that. There we go. One of those borders to hug in there a little bit better. And I'm also going to add some the border radius to my fig caption. Excellent. So now we've got this going on. All right, so now I've got these figures and the fig captions. Let me go ahead and set a little margin. And I will float these to the left. That'll get them side by side if they could have fit. So now I've got my images. They're inside of their figures. They have fig captions. And now we can clearly see how these images are being displayed and manipulated just by putting them inside of a block element. Now I didn't have to use fig caption at all. Could have used paragraphs, could have used divs. All would have worked pretty much the same. Let's try something a little bit different. I'm going to put my image here as part of a background to this headline one. So let's see, I'm going to head over to my headline one, create a rule for it in my styles, and I'll do a text align center, and I'm going to set a height on it also of 100 pixels, and then I'll do a background image. Uh, I need images slash moon.jpg. That makes more sense. Okay, so I'm going to insert this moon image as a background image for my headline one. And refresh. There we go. And it's actually working. You just really can't tell because the moon image is bigger than my space available. So 
let's try a couple things just so it stands out to you that it's working. I'm going to change the text color of my headline one. So you can actually see that I do have some text up there. But I'd also like to be able to see this moon image. So let me show you something real quick. I'm going to take my background size and I'll change it over to 20%. This will be pretty shocking, so it'll stand out to you. There we go. So now that my background image is so small, you can clearly see where it is. Now I can also take the next step of, all right, well, I'm going to say background repeat, no repeat. Okay, making sense. There's one moon, but I really like that color back there, so I'll do a background color of black to kind of fill that all in. And I could start to play around with the sizing a little bit. Make the moon a little bit bigger, but as it's getting bigger, it's also changing its location a bit. So I could also do background position. With background position, there's two numbers, okay? Two numbers you put in. The first number is the horizontal, left and right. The second number is the vertical, up and down. And the first one, if I use a positive number, like 50px, and then the next one I'll just do 0px for demo purposes, 50px, it's going to move my background image 50 pixels to the right. So if I refresh this, you'll see this moon jump over to the right a bit. There it is, just jumped over to the right. Not very much, I only did 50 pixels. But if I did uh, 200 pixels, now you'll really see it jump. There it goes, bigger jump there. So if I do a negative, negative, or let's go back to zero. Refresh this, there's the moon in its default location. So if I do negative 50, the moon will jump to the left. So for the X axis, positive to the right, negative to the left. For the Y axis, positive down, negative up. And you don't have to memorize those, you just try it, and once you see it went the wrong way, you do the other thing, okay? So I actually like it maybe in its default position on the X, but maybe I'll do a negative 50 for the Y, move that moon up a little bit higher. So I like it right over there. Now what if you like it over on the right side? Well, here's another option. Instead of using pixels, I could do a percentage. So if I say background position 100% on the X axis, it should move it all the way over to the right. There we go. Now you say, well, it's not all the way to the right, but you gotta remember this moon picture actually has a big portion of solid black fill to it. So the right edge of the photo is on the right edge of my headline one. If I want it more to the right, well, then I can break the rules a little bit. Maybe 120% to the right. Keeps pushing a little bit over there. So what I want to illustrate with this one is that I'm simply using a background image in conjunction with a headline one. And it's quite easy to do. In fact, once you get it set up, that's all there is to it. And I could do this in a number of different ways, or I could make multiple headlines now, whether a headline ones or something else. And each of my headlines is going to have that same characteristic. Ah, I noticed that this headline, oh, you know what, it's the floating. This headline should have been centered, but because of these floating images, it's getting a little bit affected by that. So, bad example there, but otherwise, I think you're getting the idea. So, I think I'll go ahead and stop it there, but I just wanted to point out basic image work using images on the web page with HTML or as background images with your CSS.